Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Introduction to Using DNS Server on Windows Server 2012. Now, I had to rack my brain for like half an hour to figure out a name that would be appropriate for teaching you guys this class. Now, it's very important that you guys understand this is an introduction class, and it's only for using DNS Server within the Windows Server 2012. 2012 environment. We are not going to go over a lot about Windows DNS Server today. Basically, I have been trying to walk you along in these classes so you can very slowly and comfortably build your own Active Directory Windows uh, 2012 servers. Now we have gotten to the point we need to start talking about DNS and show you how to interact with the DNS control panel. The problem is, the problem is, I've been sitting here and I've been reading, you know, the big, the big orange book and a, another big green book and uh, trying to figure out the information that you guys need to know for DNS. And the issue is, is that a lot of the ways that classes teach DNS, Microsoft Windows DNS, um, they try to give you too much information at the exact same time. They try to give you too much high level information that you don't understand and then that kind of confuses everything for you. So DNS is a vital infrastructure component to a Windows Server uh, architecture. So DNS is basically one of the glues that binds the internet and all TCP IP networking together now. So what DNS does is it maps fully qualified domain names or host names to IP addresses. That is incredibly vital. That is incredibly important. That's, that's, that's just a, a very, 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 very important thing. Well, the thing is, is that basic, the basic DNS concepts that you need to understand to get a basic DNS server up and running um, are, are, are pretty simple. You don't need a lot of information. But if you're going to go into the enterprise environment where you have numerous DNS servers running, where you have security concerns, when you have when you have uh, offices throughout the world, the DNS configurations for doing that can get very complicated very quick. Well, the problem is, is if I try to dump all of this information into one ball and give it to you, you're going to get confused because we haven't dealt with sites yet. We haven't dealt with replication. We haven't dealt with security. We haven't dealt with any of those things. So if I try to start trying to explain to you guys the high level DNS stuff right now, then you're going to get confused and then you're not going to learn what it is you need to learn and then it's all just going to be a complete mess. So what I'm showing you today is just the basic DNS concepts you need for Windows Server 2012 and then in the future once we've created domain controllers, once we have done other things, we will come back to DNS and we will get more sophisticated with it. So that that's what we're, we're going to be talking about today. So the core of what DNS does, DNS maps domain names to IP addresses. We've talked about this a lot. So remember, computers really don't care about domain names. They don't care about server or CNN.com. That doesn't really mean a whole lot to a computer. What a computer cares about is 192.168.1.2 or 208.66.55.4. The computer cares about the IP addresses. So what the DNS servers do is they map the domain name to the IP address. So before we can create an active directory domain controller, as, as I've talked about, we have to make sure that DHCP is running on our network and DNS is running on the network. So now what we're doing today is we're going to go in and we're going to take a little look at the DNS to make sure everything is working. The important thing with this class today is basically so that you can sit down at a server, you can open up the DS and DNS control panel and you can go, yep, it all seems to be working. <laughs> That's what we're going to be trying to do here today. So basically, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the log files. I'm going to show you a little bit of maintenance, just so you know how it works, about how to clear the DNS cache, how to restart the DNS service, how to scavenge the database if you need to clean it up. And then we're all, I'm also going to show you how to manually add a, a, a host name to IP address record 
in the, the DNS in case you need it, in case you have uh, some type of legacy device on the network that, that can't talk to the DNS server and you need to, let's say you need to put it in a network printer. So you need to say that printer equals 192.168.1.10. Basically, that's what I'm gonna show you. So let's go onto the computer right now um, so I can show you this stuff. Again, this is all simple. We're not, we're not gonna go to starts of authority. We're not gonna worry about zones. We're not gonna worry about PTRs and all that. We're just basically just worrying about the, the simple stuff that you guys need to understand in order for us to go to the next class where we are actually going to create a domain controller in an Active Directory system. So we are sitting here at my, my 2012 server and I have server manager already open. So in case you forgot, basically you go down the lower left hand corner, you click on this little toolbox and whatever thing here and that opens server manager. Now server manager will take a couple seconds, uh, maybe up to a minute for everything to populate. So if you click on server manager and you know you've already installed DNS and you've already installed DHCP and you've already installed um, Active Directory, um, if, if you don't see those things on the left hand side, just wait a minute um, and, and then they'll, they'll, they'll show up. Now, when we're going to go over, I sh as I showed you uh, with DHCP, if we go over and we click on the little DNS button over here, we're, as I told you with DACP, we're not going to get a whole lot of information. Basically, all this is going to tell us is, yep, DNS is online. So it's very, again, where I talk about user interface issues with Microsoft, this is kind of weird. You would think if you clicked on this, you would get some, some type of control panel. You don't. Basically, all you're getting is the log file. So down at the bottom, it would show you events if you had any, but you don't have any. So if we are going to be administrating the, the DNS server on this server, what we need to do is we need to go up to tools, we click on tools, and then this gives us all the tools for the, the services that are installed on the server. All we need to do is we need to go down to DNS, and this will give us the control panel in order to actually interact with the DNS server. So when this opens up, we get a nice MMC control panel, the Microsoft Management Console control panel, just likely, like we will um, for, for just about anything that we're going to be doing. We can see that we're in DNS, and then under it we can see our server name. So the reason this is called server right here is because, in fact, I named this server server. So that's why this is called server. If you named this, this server Pluto, it would say Pluto right there. If I click on the, the little left drop down, we will get some different options here. Now again, we are going to skip most of these options for today. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look, if we right click on the server icon, we right click on the server icon, we are going to get some information. Um, or, or some, some options here. Now, basically, there are only three options that I want you to worry about right at this time. The first one here is a cool little tool that right now you probably won't need. Frankly, you probably, probably won't need it very often at all, even in an enterprise environment. It's called Scavenge Stale Resource Records. What this does is, let's say you have a lab environment and you're throwing up lots of computers and you're pulling down lots of computers and you're doing a whole bunch of wacky crap, right? And all of that information goes in the DNS records and after a while, after two or three days of throwing up servers and tearing down servers and all that, all the, the records basically with D DNS, things start getting messed up. So names start getting mapped to addresses that no longer exist. Names that shouldn't be there are still there. Basically, you just get bloat on your DNS table. If you click this scavenge stale resource records, what this will do is it will go through and it'll try to clean up all of those bad old records for you so that you won't have any problems. So again, Again, I'm not really sure how hard you would have to hammer the server to actually really need to do this, but it is possible for you guys, if, again, if you're throwing up 100, 100 uh, workstations and you're, you're adding DNS records and all that, you may need to do this, um, it, possibly. The next one 
that you may need to do is clear cache. So this option here clears the cache. Now, if you have multiple DNS servers and they are all talking to each other, then the DNS servers may store information, DNS records in cache. So instead of having to ask a higher level DNS server for information every single time the server needs it, it will ask for it once, it will then store that information in cache for a certain amount of time, and instead of continuously asking the higher level DNS server, it will simply hold that, and when local computers are asking for a record, it will go to that information that is in cache. Well, especially if you're in a lab environment and you're changing a lot of things, there a lot, many times information in that cache will be outdated, and so your DNS server will be giving bad information to the local computers. So if you're making big changes, I would say every once in a while go in here and do this clear cache to make sure this hasn't cached information that is now bad. So that's the whole thing. At one time the information was good, but you're doing so many modifications to the network, it is now bad and, and it's, it's causing all kinds of problems. Now the final thing, just because this is the Windows world, you should always know how to do this. So we go down to all tasks, we can go and we can see that we have the ability to start, stop, pause, or restart the DNS service. So remember, all, all these programs on a server are services, and sometimes you need to restart those services if you make any modifications to them. When in doubt, you know when they say when in doubt, reboot for a normal computer? Well, when in doubt, and you're messing around with a server, restart. So if you make any modifications to a server service, it's always a good idea unless there's a reason not to, simply to restart the service to make sure that all of the configurations have been picked up and it's not missing anything. Um, I've pulled out what little hair I've had left back in the old days when I would make modifications to a server service, I would forget to restart the service, and then nothing would work right. The reason was is because I hadn't restarted the service, all those configurations hadn't been pulled in and it was still using the old configurations and it was all just bad. So here we've got the scavenge stale resource records, the clear cache, and we have the restart. These are all things that you may or may not need in the future. Now after that, what we should go down to is we should go and we should look at the global logs, the DNS events. Again, this is not something you will go to a lot, but if you are having major errors with your DNS server, event logs are always a good thing. This looks like just normal event viewer. I can click on whatever thing happened. If I double click, it will give me information. So basically, if you're having problems with your DNS server, you can come here and you can try to figure out you know, what is going on if you're having major, major issues. And then do a Google search if you're having problems. Now, past that, you will see that there's a lot of other options here that you can play with, but that we are not going to play with. So conditional forwards, trust points, reverse lookup zones, that's something we'll play with in the future. But today, all we are going to deal with is the forward lookup zones. So the forward lookup zones, this is what maps those domain names or host names to IP addresses. We're gonna skip over this first, what is called a zone. We're gonna skip over this. This is kind of like a global thing for the entire Active Directory structure. Basically, we're just not going to mess with it. What we're gonna do is we're going to go down to etcg.com. This is called a zone. So I called this domain etcg.com when I created it. So you come here to whatever domain you created. So if you created test.com, go to test.com, whatever domain it is. And when you do that, you are going to get some information over on the right hand side. Now, again, we're going to skip most of this information for today. Sites, TCP, UDP, blah, 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 blah. Basically, don't worry about any of that for today. What we want to look at is basically here where we see our actual records. So, right here on this record, this is how these records are stored uh, that maps those, those host names or domain names to IP addresses. So, we can see that a computer named server, so this computer actually, server, has a host host name a record so that that's the record that we're going to be dealing with and it points to 10.1.10.2 so server points to 10.1.10.2 and basically that it is a static IP address now 
as you get more and more and more and more computers on your network, this list of domain name or names to IP addresses will increase in size. So if you had a thousand different computers on this network that had contacted the DNS server, that all that information would be here. Since I only have this one computer on the network right now, that's why it only says server. Now, if I wanted to add a record, again, let's say I have a printer. Let's say I have an old, 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 old HP LaserJet printer from, I don't know, 1990 kind of like the one I actually have in the corner and I, I want that on the network and I want people to be able to go to it using a, a domain name a name such as printer instead of having to use the IP address if I right click on etcg.com or whatever your zone name is that's called a zone whatever that is I can go and I can create a new record so new host a or a, 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 and this will create a record. So I want to create a record for printer, and I will give an IP address of 10.1.10.50. Now I don't check off anything else here. We'll worry about those in different classes. And now I can add host. So it's been successfully created. If we can see here, so I've added this, so printer now maps to 10.1.10.50. Now if I pull up a command prompt now, we can see that if I try to ping printer, it will try to ping the IP address. Look, 10.1.10.50. Now, since I don't actually have any printers there or any devices there, it's not going to respond. But this is how that DNS mapping works. So I said within DNS here, printer equals 10.1.10.50. And then when I go to try to ping printer, it in fact tries to ping 10.1.10.50. So this is the basic information you need to know to go forward at this time um, so that we can do other, other projects. Again, for all you experts out there that are watching my classes for some reason and always like to say that I'm, I'm messing up, what I want you guys to understand with this is that there is much more to deal with with DNS, but if I try to explain it to you guys now, I think it's going to go right, right, right over your head and you're not going to understand any of it. The main thing I want you guys to understand is how to be able to go to the server, how to know that DNS is in fact installed on the server and how to go in and see those basic configurations. So you can see the log files and you can see that forward lookup zone. So you can see, does it have um, host name to, to IP address information in there? And if you are having problems, let's say you're trying to ping a computer, but it keeps returning the wrong IP address. Well, you can go in now to the DNS and you can see, oh, I can see that that, that, that host name is, is being pointed to the wrong IP address. Let me go in there and edit it or change it. This is just a basic concept for, for DNS. From here, we can go and start to do some more complicated stuff. That will be really, 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 really fun in the future. So, as you know, I'm Eli, this, the computer guy. This was Introduction to Using DNS Server on Windows Server 2012. As always, I enjoyed teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.